first one is that despite recent judgments from Nigeria's Supreme Court, the protection of women, especially in the context of matrimonial property in Nigeria, is still very deficient. And the first reason for my argument is that Nigeria's appellate courts have not taken the opportunity to examine the social context of inheritance under customary law. The second argument is that Nigeria's legal framework is not suited, does not enable judges to give proper protection to women's matrimonial property rights under customary law. Customary law emerged from agricultural settings. People lived close together. So they farmed in, in groups and they hunted in groups. So property income was jointly produced. And under this type of agricultural setting, it is natural that the strongest members of the family will be in charge of the production of wealth. And this is the context in which the male primogeniture custom emerged. The custom that the firstborn son will inherit not on behalf of himself, but on behalf of the entire family. He will use the inheritance to make sure that everyone is cared for, especially the women and the children. This is the setting in which matrimonial property rights also emerged. When colonial rule came, several studies have shown how customary law was distorted and how customary law was, became male-dominated and began to be seen as something that is oppressive to women. The Supreme Court of Nigeria, indeed the Court of Appeal, in fact, no appellate court in Nigeria has taken the time to analyze how customary law, the application of customary law today, differs from the agricultural settings in which it emerged, and that is a problem. Unlike some countries, like South Africa, like Kenya, like Ghana, customary law, it has no clear place in the Constitution. Its relationship with statutory law is not defined, and most importantly, its application is not subjected to the Bill of Rights. Now, some defendants of um, deep legal pluralism might say that it's a good thing for customary law not to be regulated by the state. I strongly, strongly disagree. And the reason is this. We don't know exactly what customary law was before colonial rule, but we have some idea of what it was. Now, the distortions caused by colonial rule, coupled with a whole generation of lawyers and judges who have been brought up to see law through a positivist mindset, through a rule-based mindset. In other words, law is black letter law as it is written down that it is clear, easily discoverable. They know that this is the way that they will approach customary law when they are, when they are approaching issues of customary law. If you leave customary law unregulated, if you leave it unsubjected to the Bill of Rights, the tendency is that judges will use Western standards. By Western standards, in quote, I mean what is called repugnancy test. So rather than using the Constitution, they would use the repugnancy test, which says, for a custom to be applicable, it must not be repugnant to natural justice, equity, and good conscience. Some will also add written law. That is a standard that judges use to evaluate customary law in Nigeria. And I will tell you something quite startling I found in my field work in Nigeria between 2014 and 2015. I found out that the appellate courts in Nigeria rarely use the Bill of Rights in issues relating to matrimonial property rights. In fact, the Supreme Court of Nigeria has never, ever invoked the Constitution, never invoked the Bill of Rights in any succession dispute relating to matrimonial property nor division of matrimonial property after divorce. They have never done that. And my argument is that it's because of the unclear status of customary law in the Constitution, because of a non-justiciable right to culture in the Constitution, and because of the generally ambiguous manner that legal pluralism is handled in the Nigerian legal system. We have this paradox of judges who, when it fits them, when it pleases them, they will claim that they cannot apply customary law with foreign standards. 90% of their decisions are carried out with the repugnancy test, which is a foreign standard of evaluating customary law. They will tell you that they cannot use the constitution because this is customary law. The constitution does not really apply to customary law. And yet, they will interpret customary law with the repugnancy clause. After surveying 30 decisions 
of appellate courts in Nigeria. The first significance of the argument is that matrimonial property rights of women in Nigeria is problematic in the sense that women have no legal basis for matrimonial property rights. Under customary law, women, when they leave their families, they would go to their husband's families. They would be taken to, be, to have become members of their husband's families. In other words, all their legal rights will now flow from their husband's family. The implication is that after divorce, when they go back to their parents' house, they have no legal claim to matrimonial property. Two notable decisions in 2014, in April 2014, one of them ruled that a woman is entitled to inherit property from her father's house. For the very first time, the Supreme Court of Nigeria acknowledged that the mere primogeniture rule should no longer apply. However, that did not relate to matrimonial property. And in the other one, the Supreme Court merely confirmed a decision of the Court of Appeal that a widow is entitled to her husband's property. In the past, the court used to subject a widow's right to inherit her husband's property to good behavior. In other words, you are free to live in your husband's land, his house, to farm on the land, but the moment you attempt to alienate the property, to sell it, to lease it, to raise income from it, to train your children, without the permission of your husband's family, then you have bad behavior and your right to inherit the property will now be restricted. So that's what the, the Supreme Court of Nigeria held for several years, beginning from 1963, all the way till April 2014 when it stated that that rule no longer applies. Yet, the Supreme Court did not invoke the Bill of Rights. Has, as I speak to you now, never invoked the Bill of Rights to protect women's matrimonial property rights. And so we see in Nigeria this problem that women cannot use the right to human dignity, the right to equality, or even the omnibus general right to property in the Constitution to claim matrimonial property rights. And that's a problem. And so that is the context in which I recommend legislative reform of the Constitution to define the place of customary law in the legal system. That's number one. Two, to adopt a specific legislation that will give women matrimonial property rights. And finally, for the appellate courts to invite amicus curiae evidence. In other words, invite research institutes to come and explain how customary law the application of customary law in modern conditions differs from the agricultural settings in which it emerged. The court needs to be educated on that. People need to be educated on that. They want to know, they need to know how people are adapting customary law to conditions different from the basic settings in which it emerged and how this is causing, causing hardship to women and to younger male children. So these are the recommendations that I, I make in my paper. Um, paper, of course, is still a draft. So I would welcome comments, questions, and um, suggestions on how to improve the paper. Thank you.